I've had other types of injuries and other types of pain and there's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing that compares to it and, and nothing I've ever been through was as mentally draining. You know, I fully understand that a lot of people can get better without surgery, but um, if, if you, you know, see a reputable surgeon who really thinks that you're a good candidate and that you'll have a good recovery, you know, good possibility of it being basically a cure for, for the pain. Mm -hmm. I encourage it. Welcome to another episode of Bed Back and Beyond. On today's episode, I am joined by Deborah. Deborah is a very sweet nurse from Oregon who just recently herniated her disc at the end of 2022. Deborah is joining me today because she would like to share her story of surgery and recovery to provide hope for those of you who may be currently dealing with a herniated disc. We both understand the feeling of life coming to an end, but you will soon see with Deborah that life can get back to normal pretty quickly. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for being willing to uh, do this interview with me and talk about your herniation experience. For sure. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I was wondering if you would talk about yourself a little bit. You mentioned to me that you are a runner. How long have you been running? How far do you run? Um, I have been running probably um, for pretty, pretty consistently for about 15 years or so. So I'm not a person who ran in high school um, or, or that kind of thing. I picked it up later in life, but I have been, um, I've run two marathons um, and I've run a lot of half marathons and, and 10 Ks and I've done some running clinics with particularly two different women's running clinics that have been really fun. Um, so yeah, I was definitely really uh, avid runner. I ran uh, the Eugene Marathon in Oregon um, in May of 2022, and then in December had my really severe sciatica and herniation. You mentioned to me that your sciatica was kind of a, was it a slow progress? You started off with some electrical feelings, I think is how you described it. Yeah. So um, I actually was um, going on a trip to support my running partner who also does um, Ironmans and she was doing an Ironman, a half Ironman in St. George, Utah. And I flew to see her and when to, you know, to help her um, and, you know, cheer her on and things. And when I was on the plane, I noticed this burning sensation in my hamstring. And I kind of thought that it was a hamstring injury. And like looking back, um, I can remember other times over the years where my hamstring was bothering me. And now I'm wondering um. if it was um, a, that my herniation maybe had existed and was mild for, for a long time. Okay. Um, and so that was around Halloween and I just took it easy. I stopped running for a few days and I did some, you know, followed along with some YouTube videos about mm -hmm. things. I taught, you know, I talked with a couple of people who were like, Oh, that's not your hamstring. That sounds like sciatica. Um, and so then it kind of got better. I, I did still notice it a little bit um, in particular after I had been running. Um, so I would never notice it while I was running. Um, but occasionally after running, especially if I went and sat down right away, when I would get up, I would feel something, but it would mm -hmm. usually go away pretty quickly. Um, or if I just, you know, was more conscious with doing some exercises and stretching and things like that, it seemed like it got better. And then um, I volunteered at a race um, that had multiple distances, but a half marathon being the main distance. And it was a pretty cold day. And unfortunately, I was wearing my rain boots, which don't have much cushioning or padding. And it was pretty cold. Right. And so I was jumping around and doing jumping jacks just to try to stay warm. 
And I really kind of feel like I must have done something um, that day. Then at, and that was, I was on my feet and, and volunteering there for, I think about six hours or so. And then I went running myself um, for about an hour and I didn't really necessarily notice anything that night, but when I woke up the next morning, which was a Monday, it was incredibly hard to get out of bed. So it kind mm -hmm. of just like, happened like that. That sounds like my experience. It was like a slow increase of pain. I would be sitting and I would stand up and like get the sharp pinch in my, in my butt cheek, basically. So I was convincing myself it was everything but a herniation. And then it was just the day I rolled over in bed and and that was it. Yeah. And so um, after that, I did do some physical therapy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I had already was established with acupuncture. So I you know, continued with acupuncture, which the, the kind of unfortunate thing about that is I would feel some relief after acupuncture, but my acupuncture is about an hour away from my house. And so pretty much as soon as I would get back in the car, the gains I had gotten, it all. Oh. the car was the absolute torture chamber. Um, and I bought about seven different p pillows, cushions, things to try to see if I, there was any way I could adjust sitting in the car to make it more comfortable. And none of them it really didn't helped. Help. So where did you, uh, where did getting an MRI to figure out you actually had a herniation come into that? So fortunately for me, um, things moved relatively fast compared to at least, you know, what I've seen for some other mm -hmm. people. And part of that is for me because I actually had had a history of disc herniation in my neck um, about five years ago. And so I kind of knew in that, in that situation, I probably followed a timeline more like the longer timelines I've seen some people, okay. but because I kind of had this idea of what was happening. I pushed for things to happen more quickly. So um, the, the um, half marathon was on December 12th. I saw my primary care doctor, I think on January 7th, and she ordered the MRI and I had the MRI about 10 days later, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, um, you know, the MRI showed a very severe herniation at L5S1 mm -hmm. and a mild herniation at L4, L5. Oh, so you um, had two. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and so um, I also had the fortune of, having had seen a surgeon um, back for my herniated discs in my cervical spine. And at that time, he really didn't recommend surgery. Um, mm -hmm. But I, you know, he knows me and I'm a nurse and, and we've worked together at the hospital. And so I was really fortunate in, you know, being able to get a relatively quick appointment with him. Um, so I saw him on February 8th and he um, was this time a very different appointment. It was, ba I, I basically couldn't sit, could hardly stand. Mm -hmm. Um, and he did a very quick exam and was like, okay, I'm going to consent you for a laminotomy and a discectomy and we'll get you in as soon as we can. Um, which turned out to be March 16th. So, um, wow. so from know, December to March. That is yeah, pretty quick. So yeah, pretty, pretty quick. So I was um, basically by the by the end of January, not even quite that that sort of like mid like January 20th or so, maybe even January 16th, I was almost unable to function. Um, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't drive anymore. I um, basically spent um, most of my time just laying flat on the floor. Um, mm -hmm. and I did, I was able to work still somewhat in that I have okay. a laptop that like you can make completely uh. vertical <laughs> and I would just lay right. on the floor with my laptop. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I couldn't walk my dog. I could barely cook. Mm -hmm. I could, you know, um, was pretty much just stuck on the floor. It's from, life halting. Yes. 
Yeah. And I was taking really high doses of gabapentin, which um, mm -hmm. like maybe barely kind of helped a little bit and a lot of Advil or Aleve um, and a heating pad. I just like lived on my heating pad. Right. Um, and I did some ice, but for me, the heat was the most kind of helpful thing. Um, but yeah, I was in so much pain and I, I mm -hmm. really could barely do anything. For the record, was your surgeon an ortho or a noro surgeon? He was an ortho. Okay. He's an ortho. But you said you already had a working experience with him? Yeah. Um, so I worked at this hospital for many, many years, and he and I were actually assigned to a project together uh, many years ago on hand washing. So we <laughs> had worked together. And also I'm friendly with the manager of the ortho unit and he was the medical director of ortho. And so sometimes I'd be in her office and he'd drop by. So we kind of, you know, knew each other a little bit sort of socially in the hospital as well as, and, you know, he's considered to be the guy at my okay. hospital um, that you, that you really want to see um, if yeah. you have an injury like this. So being a nurse and knowing the physician, do you think that alleviated any of your fear for surgery or were, was there still a lot of anxiety surrounding that? That's a great question. So I never had had surgery before. I never had general anesthesia before. So I was a little bit, you know, concerned about that. But I, I work in, um, I work, my job is that I work very closely with the breast surgeon. I don't work in the operating room, but I help patients to understand what to expect with their breast surgery, mm -hmm. both before and after. So I certainly okay. have a, a level of comfort with knowing how safe surgeries are and how right. low the rate of complications are. But I would say that I, I did, um, there were times where I was questioning if I was giving in too quickly, um, mm -hmm. you know, and I was certainly weighing the fact that I was virtually non-functional and I did not seem to be improving, but I knew that other people's timeframes were longer and that probably it might get better on its own if I waited right. longer, but, um, given, you know, with my neck injury, that's what I did. And it took about eight or nine months before it really recovered, but, it wasn't keeping me from functioning the way right. that it was. Um, so, you know, I had, I think sort of, you know, maybe slightly less, but normal amount of concern about um, having general anesthesia, but I would say probably my biggest concern was about re herniation mm -hmm. and just not, you know, hearing other people's stories of that and, and just being really concerned about what's the risk of that. And, and how much control do we have in our recovery over preventing that? And I guess in a, in a way, you know, so it hasn't been six, quite six months yet since my right. surgery that it, that's still something I, I think about, although mm -hmm. I'm really doing great. That's great. That's good to hear. I certainly remember the re herniation just being a constant focus of my attention for the first several months after surgery. And For I keep sure. telling people, uh, distract your mind because <laughs> <laughs> mental health is huge during the recovery period. It is. It really How is. How are you emotionally post-surgery? So overall, I would say I'm great. Um, I, I have not returned to running yet. I am planning on giving it a try. Um, mm -hmm. And my surgeon said that that was fine as long as I make sure that I do not heel strike at all, that I oh. am always really conscious of um, landing on my midsole. Um, okay. So that was his, yeah, um, you know, really gave me kind of a firm talking to about yeah. that. For um, just for right now or just for the foreseeable future, no heel strike? Correct. Yeah. Oh, for okay. That oh, okay. In his mind, um, what really cushions us anatomically for running is that midsole. Okay. And so that's really important. Um, I do have, 
uh, very little disc space on my x-rays. Um, okay. And so he also um, really stressed that I need to work on developing more glute strength. Um, so he actually told me that I need to do a hundred squats a day. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds like torture. <laughs> um, which I am not quite there yet. Um, uh -huh. I I do work on it. And I've been um, doing private Pilates lessons, which has been really good. And I also have been doing water aerobics, which is not something that I had done before my surgery um, and was not something that was really something I thought of would be fun exercise, but actually really enjoy it. Okay. Um, and so, um, you know, and I've been walking. It's at a pool, our town pool, um, okay. which is really close to where I live. So okay. it's nice. Um, Did you see a physical therapist after surgery? No. Um, okay. So my surgeon does not um, have people do physical therapy after surgery. Um, I did quite a lot before. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, I just do some exercises that, you know, I would say probably the biggest thing are it's doing like hip bridge mm -hmm. types of, of things, um, but bird dogs and mm -hmm. um, that kind you know, clamshells and things that lots of people with this injury are familiar with. Right. And did you, um, are you, do you live alone or did you happen to have help with you after surgery? Um, so I live with my partner and we don't have children. We have a dog. Um, and yeah. yes, <laughs> he was a huge help, but I have, you know, told people, I do think you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, I did try to do as much myself, um, as I possibly could. And we rigged up some systems in particular, the hardest thing with a nod bending and lifting is the dog bowls, getting the dog bowls up and down off the floor. Um, so we used some really lightweight plastic bowls for a while that I could use a grabber tool. Um, or I, I would just take the kibble and, and kind of just pour it from on high um, oh. <laughs> into the bowl. Um, but, um, and, and then having things on the top shelf of the refrigerator, um, is important, but I did, I was able to squat, um, pretty quickly after the surgery. Mm -hmm. So instead of bending, just always be squatting. Right. Um, and I did have to use a sock aid, um, and like do some shenanigans to get pants on and off um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I was able to, to manage pretty well um, on my own. And we have a two story house and I was able to go up the stairs the day of my surgery. So they had planned for me to spend one night in the hospital, okay. um, but I ultimately didn't need to. And I was able to go home the same day. Oh, okay. And do you feel like being physically active, running, uh, had a big help in your recovery? I do think that it is, you know, and also the fact that I was basically only incapacitated for three months, mm -hmm. um, that that really probably helped me to have a, a quicker recovery. Um, and the pain after the surgery, basically my sciatica pain almost went away right away. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like there, but it was much more of like a pressure feeling than really a pain feeling. And I didn't take any um, opioids after my surgery. So my incision did hurt, especially the first two nights turning right. around in bed was, oh, wow. Um, but um, it got better fast, really fast. And, um, you know, I was doing... I've seen some people say they were walking, you know, miles right away. That wasn't mm -hmm. me, but mm -hmm. I was walking, um, you know, four or five blocks around my neighborhood pretty much right away. It sounds like you had a pretty great experience as far as, you know, the, the doctor goes and just the surgery and recovery. 
Is there anything that you would say that you wish people knew ahead of time going into surgery? Um, I do think that the, the fear of the reherniation is, is so much that I think that really can, um, cause people to put off the surgery. And, you know, another factor for me is I just recently turned 50 and, you know, I see a lot of people who are young and, and I can kind of understand for them wanting to wait a little longer and see if they're going to recover um, with conservative measures. But for me, I just felt like I had no time. <laughs> I have no time. I had to cancel several trips. I, oh. um, you know, I have season tickets for our local um, major league soccer team. I couldn't go to games. Like I was like, I need to get my life back fast. <laughs> yes. That was pretty much how I felt. I was from uh, end of August. No, wait, when it ended June. And then I had my surgery end of August. Okay. You know, so you were, and time was the big factor. I couldn't be missing. I was a per diem. So I was unpaid for uh, all that time. And I just, I needed to get back to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I fully understand that a lot of people can get better without surgery, but, um, if, if you, you know, see a reputable surgeon who really thinks that you're a good candidate and that you'll have a good recovery, you know, good possibility of it being basically a cure for, for the pain. Mm -hmm. I encourage it. And would you say that you're feeling now, what are you, are you five months or six months out from five surgery? Months. Five months. Are you starting to feel back to yourself or do you think yeah. you have a little bit of time to go? Yeah, I feel pretty much back to myself. Um, I went on my first long plane trip um, a couple weeks ago and that went fine. I did bring um, of my many cushions that I had purchased. <laughs> I did bring one um, to use on the plane and I'm glad that I did. It was helpful. Um, but one of the, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over actually having COVID. Um, <sighs> Sorry. Yeah, for the first time. Um, one of the um, activities on this recent trip was um, that I was very uncertain about whether I was going to participate in or not was going on a um, trail ride on a horse. Oh. And um, <laughs> it's something that before my surgery, I wouldn't have thought I would absolutely go. Um, I am not... Um, didn't spend tons of time on horses as a kid, but definitely enough time that I'm comfortable and something that I enjoy and wouldn't have thought twice about. But after my surgery, I was really unsure. Um, and I did talk with the people at the barn and, and they gave me a extremely mellow horse. Um, <laughs> the fact that I was able to do that, um, was, was definitely, uh, okay. I'm pretty much back to normal now. I remember getting hurt and just thinking life is never going to get back to normal. Am I, will I work again? And, you know, here you are almost six months and you're horseback riding, you're going on flights and I, it's just a real encourage, encouragement to see you doing well. And um, just knowing like, this is not the end of the world. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Any other tips or tricks you would like to uh, say to people who may be suffering with the herniation at this moment? It is, you know, I, I've i never, I've had other types of injuries and other types of pain and there's nothing, mm -hmm. nothing that compares to it and, and nothing I've ever been through was as mentally draining as, as that was um, and was, was, super low. Um, and I just want to encourage people that you will get better. Um, and to do whatever it takes to get through, get the care that you need, keep advocating for yourself, um, to get an MRI, to mm -hmm. see a surgeon, um, you have to push, but, um, it, it will, there are solutions. It will get better. 
Well, thank you again so much for just being willing to come on here with me and just talk about your situation. I know a lot of people are going to appreciate hearing your story and you are going to give people hope just seeing the glimpse of I can get back to normal. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you.